So we were just talking about how, you know, the, the, the important thing about a table like this one, where it's showing the positive and negative intervals of the graph, the graph cannot go from positive to negative without an x-intercept. So if we know all the x-intercepts, and we know, for example, that between, if we pick a number between 1 and 4 on this picture, the number 2, and plug it into this equation, it turns out you get a negative number, right? 2 minus 4 is uh, negative 2, 2 minus 1 is positive 1, 2 pl plus 3 is 5. All of this is positive, but it multiplies by a negative. That tells you that there's a point in that region that's x value is 2, but the y value is negative. Now, we we just knowing that one point now means we know this entire region must be negative because it it would have to have another x intercept if another part of this region were positive so you what you can do when you get to a point like this and you can see that what that's what this little table down here is doing they're picking a number left of negative 3 subbing it in and seeing if they get a positive or negative. When they subbed in negative 4, they got a positive. That means this function is positive in this area all the time, right? Let's draw the function. We can compare it. So it's x minus 4, x minus 1 squared, and x plus 3. x minus 4, x minus 1 squared, and x plus 3. Okay, and you know, look at what, what our little table suggested would happen right? Left of negative 3, the function's positive, okay? That's that's what this says. In between negative 3 and 1, it's negative, okay? So there you go, negative 3 to 1 is all negative. It's 0 at 1, but then it's negative again, okay, uh, from this section, and then it's positive on the other side of 4. A, the, a table like this tells you so much information, right? I mean, just looking at this table, you should be able to tell me that this is an even function, an even degree function, right? It ends positive, positive. It end, its end behavior is, is pointing up. You should also be able to tell me that at negative 3, there's an odd multiplicity root because we're passing through the x-axis, whereas at 1, there's an even multiplicity root which bounces off the x-axis, okay? And again, all this is confirmed in the picture that we see here. This is what I'm talking about when I say a lot of this information is, is redundant. You already knew it, right? But it's about putting this together and, and, you know, sort of checking your work as you go and making sure you have a coherent picture. Okay, so the graph of a polynomial function, we know that the degree and the leading coefficient tell us everything we need to know about end behavior. Okay, again, this is simply a rehash of what we've talked about for the last couple of days. Okay, so but it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice summary of all that information. So if you're, as you're doing this work, you might want to have that page open and that way you can sort of, uh, you know, look through it. Uh, again, all real numbers are going to be your domain every single time. There are no, uh, there are no um, uh, limitations. The range, uh, th this is an error. I mean, we need to change this. It says all real values of y. Um, you know, for odd functions, yes, that's true. But not for even functions. Even functions, because they start and end in the same quadrant, they will always have some sort of number that they never get above or some sort of number that they never get below. So, uh, you know, you got to change this here where it says range. It's not all real values. It is real values for odd, okay? It is not all numbers for even. Uh, even will have a limitation. Again, cubics have that sort of S shape. Uh, quartic, you know, have the W or the U shape. The maximum number of x-intercepts is equal to the degree. The minimum number is zero for evens or one for odds. Okay, again, an odd simply has to get through the x-axis because how else do you get from negative infinity to positive infinity without passing zero? Multiplicity, remember, is a question of each root. Each root will have its own multiplicity. Uh, I'm going to call, I usually call it order. So the order of the root, is the root even or is the root odd? You will know that based on how many times the root appears. The turning point is another one that's interesting. Um, we know that, that you can have n minus 1 turning points, but we also found some restrictions yesterday in the number of turning points you can have. Specifically, we found that a quartic could have 1 or could have 3.
but it couldn't have 2 or 0. And we found that a cubic could have 0 or 2, but it couldn't have 1. I said I'd leave that question to you as a thinking question, so again, if you haven't had a chance to think of that yet, make sure you do so before the assessments next week. The graph of every polynomial function is continuous, so we never need to worry about any kind of restriction to the domain, any sharp turns, any gaps or jumps or holes or asymptotes or anything of that. So for this first one, okay, sketch the following polynomial functions, x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 3. Okay, so let's, let's you know, build this up gradually and, and we'll see what we can do. So x minus 1 tells me that there is an intercept when x equals 1. So our function has to pass through the point 1, 0. The reason being, if you plug in 1 into this equation, you get 0 times 3 times negative 2, and of course the overall answer is 0. The other x-intercept we'd be looking at here is a negative 2. So let's make another point at negative 2, 0. So your graph should have a point at 1, 0 and negative 2, 0 over here. Okay, finally it should have another uh, root at x equals 3. So let's make 3, comma 0. Okay, so so far this is what we know. We know that this graph uh, goes through these three points. You can already tell that there's really only two ways that this could happen, right? Uh, we could either start high and come down through this one, up through this one, and down through that one, right? Or we could, you know, start low. And, and draw it the reverse way. So, you know, there's only one of the two uh, d different uh, approaches you're going to be able to take here. I just don't usually do this, but I, oh yeah, there we go, freehand. Okay, so again, either my function starts up here. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just ignore that. Either my function starts high, right, and ends low, in which case you, you already know what to draw, right? You make sure it goes through all three roots. Uh, or it starts low and ends high, right? And in that case, you 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 kind of go through that way. Let's see if it can sort of figure this out. Okay, so something like that is is one possibility. Uh, the other possibility would be something like this. It comes down and up and down through there, right? And then its end behavior uh, goes accordingly. Okay. So let's let's look now and see what else we can how we can narrow this down. Okay. Consider that the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient equals a positive, okay? The degree of this function is equal to 3. Now I know that, I know it's degree 3, because there are three factors, none of them are repeated, and again, if you were to FOIL this out, one of the terms you FOIL out would be x times x times x, which is x cubed, and no other term would have a higher degree than that, so we're looking at x, we're looking at a cubic. We know that a cubic with a positive coefficient has to start low and end high. Sorry, try and draw that here. Okay, so we know it's going to sort of, these don't ignore the points, but just sort of the arrows are instructive. It starts low down here, it comes up through this one, down through this one, up and then up through C, and ends up here. So once again, we are narrowing down the possibilities. Uh, another easy point we can get is the y-intercept. I'm guessing the y-intercept has to be up here in the positive region somewhere, simply for my picture to make sense. So if I get a y-intercept that's negative, it probably means I've made an error. Or it's, it's my cue that I need to look at something. In any case, let's look at this one. And you know, x minus one, x plus two, and x minus three. If I sub in zero, right? Zero minus one, zero plus two, and zero minus three then I get y equals negative 1 times 2 times negative 3. Here I get y equals 6. So I now know that not only does it go through all these points, it also goes through the point 0, 6. Okay, now, uh, again, I, I, all I'm trying to do here is narrow down what could possibly be drawn. I know, I know everything I could possibly want to know about this thing. I know when it's negative, when it's positive. I know all its different... Uh, um, x-intercepts, and now if we go and actually sketch the function, right, so uh, x minus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 3, you notice that it goes through perfectly everything we said it would. It starts low, it passes through b, it goes smoothly through b, it passes through this uh, x -inter or y intercept, I'm sorry, at 0, 6, it passes through 1, 0, and then it sweeps up again through 3, 0. No bouncing off the axis, no cubic uh, 
roots or anything like that. Just a fairly straightforward function just to get us started. But again, the process that we just used is the process we're always going to be able to use, right? Uh, graph the roots, graph the y-intercept, examine the order of the roots to see if you have any bounces or anything like that, uh, check the end behavior, and then sketch. If you cannot sketch at this point, or if you feel like you don't have enough information, use the interval table. So remember, the interval table is just what we were looking at up here, where you pick a number in each range and show that it is positive or negative in each range. Quickly here, imagine we picked uh, you know, negative 3 and f of negative 3. You see that that number appears down here as a negative. If we pick, we already picked a number in this region, right? We picked 0, which was a positive. We can check 2 and f of 2 which is a negative, and then we can check 4 and f of 4, and of course that is a positive. So, you know, we, we get that pattern that we expected. There was a negative, negative here, sorry, negative here, negative here, in this region between A and C, and then uh, positives uh, in the other regions, right? Positive in the region in between B and A, and then positive sort of after C. There we go. Okay, so positive uh, after C. So just quickly, we'll just uh, grab, grab a picture of this. Okay, and um, you know, for our note, yeah, this goes uh, this goes there. Okay, so shrink it down a bit. Okay, so that that's what your graph uh, is going to look like there. Now, when we go to this next one, okay, it's marginally more complicated. Uh, it has a negative leading coefficient, so uh, negative leading coefficient. Uh, its total, its degree, okay, the first factor is degree 2, because it's x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 1, right? 3x's makes degree 3. So as a cubic, I'm expecting this to start high and end low. I already know that that's what it's going to do because that's what cubics with negative leading coefficients do. I expect there to be an x-intercept at negative 2, an x-intercept at positive 1, uh, sorry, x, let's write it this way, x equals 1, x equals negative 2. I know there's going to be a y-intercept when I plug in 0, so let's quickly plug in 0, see what we get. Negative 2 bracket 0 plus 2 squared uh, times 0 minus 1 gives me negative 2 times 4 times negative 1 which gives me the number 8. So I know that this number, this graph is going to pass through 0, 8. Okay, now let's let's write what we know uh, on the GeoGebra again. So let me just quickly knock all this stuff out. Okay, we have a x-intercept at 0, 8. Okay, uh, excuse me, a y-intercept, sorry. We have an x-intercept at x equals negative 2. So negative 2 comma 0. And we have an x-intercept at positive 1. So 1 comma 0. Uh, the end behavior we said was negative, so we're expecting to start high and end low. Now, if I go ahead and try to draw this one, okay, uh, I run into a problem. Right here, I come down through B, and then how do I get to A? in order to get to C. Like, it seems like this makes sense, but I can't do this, right? I can't I can't do this because there would have been another x-intercept for me to find. So, I don't understand how this function can do what we think it's going to do, right? Uh, I could understand how this function is going to do this, Right, but that is inconsistent with what we said should happen from the perspective of, um, you know, the end behavior. So, you know, I'm about to run out of time on this segment, so this is a good time to just make a brief pause. What have I done wrong here, or what have I not thought about or failed to do that's preventing me from getting this right? Turn to the person beside you while the next video loads and, and you know, figure out why, how am I going to get a function to go through these three points and, and you know, go through uh, these correct end behaviors?